Hello, uh, my name is Sky McLeod, and um, I'm really excited to be talking with Tanika and Shaquem Williams today. Um, the name of our show today is called Wisdom from Life and Community. Uh, this is a little bit of an experiment. We are uh, recording using uh, Zoom, and I'm so excited that they're both with me today to talk about their artistic practice and you know, discuss um, discuss some things um, that is very pertinent in today's uh, COVID-19 crisis. Uh, first, I'd just like to um, share a little bit about Tanika and Shaquem. Um, Tanika Williams employs the use of narrative prose, video, performance, and installation to explore Black women's transfer of generational knowledge and transmission of embodied family archives. She designs liturgical rites to uplift the voices and expertise of marginalized Black women and give authority to their autobiographical expressions in the production of knowledge. Her work is influenced by Afro-Caribbean aesthetics of magic and mystical phenomena. And Shaquem Williams is an art enthusiast and collector. As an art enthusiast, Williams uses his extensive experience with exhibition viewings, gallery, museum and art fair attendances, artist studio visits, researching and cataloging to design inventive practices and platforms for people interested in exploring the arts. Williams has committed himself to informing and inspiring novice collectors and uses his social media platforms to highlight upcoming artists and significant events. His personal collection centers immigrant artists of color who devote their careers to telling their stories of the politically, socially, and economically oppressed. So just wanna welcome you to, uh, to the show. This is a, it's kind of an experiment. Um, I, I was just uh, talking with Shaquem and Tanika earlier. Um, I, I'm in my, my in-law's basement, as you can probably see from the background. And, um, and, uh, this is an exciting new platform for uh, telling stories. And so I, I wanna start with you, Tanika. I, I know you really well through uh, many fronts. Um, you're a very active community producer. Uh, you're also in the Media Arts Fellowship um, and you're, you're uh, participating in, in uh, our innovative program, the Black Box Filmmaking Program. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit, um, but just to start off, I, I'd, I'd like to, um, you know, um, talk a little bit about some work um, that you shared um, um, while uh, applying for the uh, Media Arts Fellowship. Um, so, so this work, Grandma's Vanity, uh, can can you talk a little bit about it and and uh, and what what uh, inspired you to make this work of art? Um, yes, so Grandma's Vanity was an installation that accompanied a chapel service looking at the ways in which Black women retain and share information. And a lot of my practice considers the quiet and the gestures that exist in between relationships and how people learn in, in, in those times. I think we both have had the experience of being told to just be quiet and watch, observe, and you learn in that way. And one of the things that I have found, not for all, um, but for many Black women, is this thing of a staging area where when you were a child, you grew up, you grew up seeing your mom or your grandmother set their things up uh, in this place. And so it involves a mirror an array of hair and body care products, a chair, some black stockings. And these are the products that we saw growing up and just thinking about how important the lesson of self-care and beautification is, particularly when it comes down to survival. I'd like to play a, a short clip of a a, a piece that you you performed. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say about anything about it uh, up front. I, I want to play uh, first, and then maybe we can talk a little bit. Wisdom comes in 
from a stubborn personality that sometimes learns the hard way. Wisdom from a free spirit, wisdom from happiness, wisdom from pain and loss, wisdom from life. Wisdom rains down in many pathways from God. Nayame, Allah, Olodumare, Oya, Eshu, Yeshua, the Holy Spirit, the I am who I am. Give thanks and praise to the Most High. Ashe. So this this is this really spoke to me when when I saw it. I, you know the wisdom from life and community. Um, I, I'd like to hear a little bit um, from both of you. How well, first first I want to hear how how you came up came up with this piece because i think it's really remarkable and and i'll i'll um add a, a link for for those of you who want to watch the whole thing it's a really remarkable piece um and then and then maybe we could talk a little bit about wisdom from life and community uh, um in your practice and and how that might relate to what's going on today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so to begin that piece was highly collaborative and it was a moment in which a number of different people were invited to lend their voices to consider, again, the many ways that we learn. So in the background, there was uh, a woman working with some kale and some collard greens. So she was literally preparing a garden bed. Um, and we have just started gardening, right? So I'll let you talk about gardening as that moment of an exchange of wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, so full disclosure, I grew up um, in Brooklyn, New York, in East Flatbush, um, in a primarily West Indian household. Mm -hmm. um, my grandfather migrated here from Barbados, I want to say sometime in like the 50s, early 60s, late 50s, early 60s. And um, when he came here, he met my grandmother who was from the South. Um, ironically, both of their practices and what they did daily um, in terms of preparing food, growing food, and um, raising children was a lot of similarities, him being from the Caribbean and her being from the South here in um, America. And when they brought this house that we're currently living in right now in East Flatbush, uh, one of the primary things that my grandfather was in charge of that he took care of was growing food. Um, he grew majority of our food in the backyard. And recently he has taken um, sick and he has gotten a little drastically older and um, he has passed that responsibility on to us. Um, I say all that to say this is that when it was the passing of that torch wasn't a ceremonious. Um, it wasn't even really a conversation. It was more or less like, hey, You've been back here with me this whole time. Now you go ahead and do this because I can't do this no more. And, but for me, it was the biggest thing ever because I'm like, oh, wow, now all the things that I observed and saw all these years, we have to put it into action. Yeah. Um, and he just recently gave us seeds yeah. to put in the backyard, which was a gift because he had put the seeds in his pill bottles. And that's what he had stored in. And we found that ironic that these seeds that he cherished in his household he had ironically put him in a pill bottle that he always, before he got sick, when I was growing up, saying that, that those are the things that keep us sick in that bay. Mm -hmm. It's the actual um, medicine, um, but not knowing how to eat, how to take care of ourselves, and, um, and what herbs to take for different type of ailments that we may suffer. You know, that, that is what we, um, that's, that's, that's the gift, that's the wisdom that we should cherish yeah. is that passing down of that ancestral knowledge. And so in that piece, there were layers of that. So the hair braiding was the passing down of that knowledge. Right. Um, the reading of the poems, the, the women with the hand gestures, um, even on the stage, there were several chairs set up where eventually at some point, a council of elder women dressed in white came and sat um, just to think about how we are raised with all of this knowledge that predates Google, and it's up to us to maintain it beyond Google. That that's really that's so interesting. Um, seeds in a pill bottle and seeds as a form of healing, and and um, 
and I, I know that that my um, I, I've I've been gardening with my my little girls. Um, we, we're in a um, we're in a uh, a family brownstone that's been in our 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 um, well, actually my wife's uh, family since the the twenties. So um, we have a little backyard, and I know that there's something really therapeutic about putting your hands in the soil and 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 growing something and and, and um I, I just i really relate to that and there, there's something very therapeutic both for me and and my kids and and the transmission of this knowledge of something that's really forgotten now when you're living in in a city and, and you go to the store and you get, uh, um there's there's something really um wonderful and, and and organic and and really it's it's great I, I, as, as you're talking i was like oh i gotta i gotta <laughs> yeah, i'm glad you showed us that yeah, image so um it's very heartwarming um uh, because the whole time we were in the backyard the last couple of days there for um good friday to plant we're going to plant tomorrow on uh, my daughter um who is five turning six um she's been back there the whole time and you know we just love the fact that she to cherish that these this is a gift this is something of value you know yeah. to pass on and like you said it's therapeutic and it's, it's a joy to put not only your hands but your feet and you know mm -hmm. your whole being into that soil that is nourishing you and you know yeah. particularly in this moment um as we have been working through quarantine i know one of the things that we i specifically wanted to bring up um especially as it relates to this idea of being an artist. Um, we speak about artists normally as an individual. Right. And we don't really talk about the artist as the person who's bringing this army of resources behind them. And right. so even with the chapel, for any one person who was up there, there were 30 different people who you'll never see that influenced them very deeply. And I know from my arts practice, um, the, my collaborator is also my life partner. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I always joke about is my name may be there, but no one, no one ever recognizes that whether it is physically lifting a thing, moving a chair, bring from point A to point B, saying, hey, do this, instead of doing that, like, you know, as all of this was happening, that day was pure shenanigans because we also had portraits done by um, Roger B. Walker of Paper Monday. Monday. So while these 20 different people who were involved in this are being positioned, he was back there making sure that all of their portraits were done. And, you know, that whole work would not have been possible without him literally bringing the food to feed all of the participants, setting up the areas, getting people from point A to point B, when I'm shutting down and being a complete brat, filling in and saying, okay, no, this is what you need to do, this is what she wants, and blah, 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 and hey, make this adjustment to the point where our, our practice has been so beautifully intertwined with our life practice that requires so little conversation. Right. And I'm extremely thankful for myself as an individual that I don't necessarily need to go to the library if I need to find something out. I usually just ask him, <laughs> you know, and he's usually the one who's just like, you need to apply for this or you need to go check this out. Or did you go to the show? And I'm kind of just like, but you're doing it already. And, <laughs> you, you know, and so to be able to have that um, prior to this time is really amplified by that in in this time and um in preparation for this talk i began to think about what it means to collaborate creatively during covid19 right. um, as we are working on a project now for easter so literally we were like filming yesterday and, and taking images he was taking the images yesterday and we have the second and third part of it um, so there have been like these three things that have grounded us. Um, so particularly in this moment, this notion of consideration. Yes. 
So whereas before, particularly because we also share a life practice with our work practice, before I may have said whatever came to mind, now everything requires such deeper consideration um, because there's this larger thing that we're both being impacted by in very deep ways. You know, he's lost a family member um, during this time. And I have to constantly remind myself to rethink how I'm talking about this as I'm dealing with someone who's lost a loved one. Same, same. And um, consideration, even for those that's outside of um, this country that yeah. we reside in. Um, prior to this, I had a lot of friends. I still do um, have a lot of friends who are in various parts of the world that was affected by COVID before we were. And a lot of them were artists. And it was interesting that I, what I took away from it is even though this tragic thing is going on, they still was able to have um, grace, humility, and they still was dedicated to their practice in the midst of it. Yeah. And that is what was able to push them through. Um, as we're constantly bombarded with imagery, um, statistics, um, news, it creates a, such a higher level of anxiety and fear that um, we can either respond to by being stuck or being productive and leaning on community and being considerate of others. You know, um, if we didn't have certain um, luxuries that we have here um, in America, um, like being able to say, okay, yeah, we're quarantined, but I could go to the store. Right. Um, I could go and buy 20 rolls of paper towel just because I think there might not be no paper towel. You know, these, 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 these luxuries we kind of take for granted. Whereas other people, that's not even a conversation um, for them. Like they're, they're thinking about, we still have to go to work. Mm -hmm. um, I still have to deal with even access to um, adequate um, resources in terms of food, water, um, shelter. Um, I mean, you think about even what happened in India. Um, yeah, with yeah, with the doctors and yeah, everything. That was, and, and, and then, you know, when I sit here and I think about it, and people are complaining about this present moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's worth complaining, you know, we can complain, but there's people who have things for us and we have to be considerate of that and, and mindful of that. Sorry. Yeah. In addition to consideration, another thing that has come up is this notion of community. Yeah. And so what started to happen in certain parts of India, you had landlords who were evicting the medical professionals because they did not want their temporary tenants to bring home COVID-19. And so, you know, for us, this notion of community has been amplified both within our home and outside of our home. And so thinking about how to, when you have an international circle of friends who are in different places, how do you connect globally in a deep way and how do you expand a deep community of care through the internet, particularly when it's also being used as a tool that's sharing incorrect information and dealing with this in, an, in a manner that's actually inappropriate. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that first happened in our house when the meme started going around, he was very clear um, as one of the adults in our household, hey, we're not gonna share any of these jokes because we don't know what this, this is, is going to look like. Right. And I'm really glad I, I thought about how he was framing up community because within a matter of weeks, we started to receive word that people we know were also losing people. Right. And, and just recognizing how it, the, the jokes may have seemed useful at a time, but ultimately they were somewhat it important. It's very harmful. And, um, it's mm -hmm. something that I've been seeking my whole life since um, I became a young, since, since I was young, um, it's compassion, actual compassion. Not compassion with the guise of receiving something back in return from those. Um, or being compassionate to a cause, but not really fully understanding the cause that you're compassionate to, but actual true mm -hmm. compassion for those around you. Um, even if you have no relation to them. Um, yeah. And even when I sit in, I think about, um, when I read articles and even hearing about individuals who are in prison um, and how yeah. that is rampant in prison, but then I'm like, we can have this conversation about releasing them, but why would they, what can we have the conversation about why they were there to begin with? Yeah. Or even the conditions in which they're under 
because it's like you know it's kind of like out of sight out of mind you know we walk by people who are homeless um daily and we don't see how the system that we all exist within contributed to those ending up there we look at it as if you're it's your fault you're there and i'm better than you because even though i may be living paycheck to paycheck Right. which is the majority of people in this country, as is, as you can see where um, a lot of these businesses are laying people off because they can't afford to be shut down for a week. Right. But you, if somebody turns around and ends up unemployed outside of COVID, then it's like, well, you know, you're lazy. You didn't work hard enough to pull yourself up. But, you know, these corporations that are saying this, it have this wide abundance of money, right. can't afford to, to stop and be considerate the fact that there are people dying. And I think right. particularly in supporting artist communities right. at this time, we've been really big well, on sharing resources and um, sharing uh, other information so that when people don't have to, you okay? Everything has parents like you know, they watch well, oh, it's okay, go ahead. Go so ahead. that um, people know that there there's other help and we're considering them, right? And buying work. Um, during this time, even though we are not 100% certain around what our eventual financial outcome will be, we're still supporting fundraisers to buy work because we're recognizing that everything is cyclical yeah. and, and you have to actually keep things in circulation. And what's been really beautiful is as we've made the choice to say we don't have much, but we'll share we have received Back to so forth. much in return and just remembering that and so and it's not even monetarily yeah um, I'm, I'm talking about if it's a conversation mm -hmm. um if it's a it's a recommendation I'm, I'm a huge cinephile so you know this time I, i've had time to actually catch up on a lot of phenomenal works that i didn't get a chance to see and i look at that as a gift it's a tremendous um, yeah gift. And, and, you know just things like that those those help you exchange it's bartering um you know, even now as gardening, I'm even now want to have conversations around, okay, well, mm -hmm. let me trade this to you. And, you know, we could have these conversations about giving food to people and stuff like that. And I think just getting back to being actual human beings yeah, and not just being hamsters within a wheel, um, trying to get nowhere fast. And I feel like now just to really tap into being actual living human beings and moving with a sense of humility and grace um, is, is essential. And hopefully, when we come out on the other side of this, mm -hmm. that we actually learn the lesson that is being taught to us right now. Um, I think that is right. a huge lesson that the way we were operating beforehand, we need to consider that that is not necessarily the best way for us to operate. Agreed. And I think the third thing that has come up at this time is this notion of communication. And so not just how we're speaking to each other, but also how is our art speaking? Yeah. How is our practice of collecting speaking? Um, how is what we're speaking into the future existence taking shape? And um, a lot is happening on social media right now. And just trying to be very intentional about truth telling. And so even today, for myself as someone who makes work, being transparent and communicating that I work in collaboration though my name may be attached to something there's a whole team and more times than not a, a whole entire human being who's also a part of that process and so taking this time to really just this quarantining specifically around COVID-19 and affairs around what it means to be a practicing artist at this time has really enforced for me the importance of letting others know, being very clear about the fact that we can't survive in isolated cells. No. And we have more resources and more riches than we know, we just usually don't name them because we don't consider them resources and riches. You know, it's not until you realize that you can't necessarily go to the store that you value being able to go to the store, being able to say that I'm able-bodied enough to go and walk to scan this thing, um, speaking with the people who are behind the registers with social distancing, of course, to just say, hey, are you okay? You know, sometimes the art world 
can have people who are artists feeling as though somehow we're not a part of or we're just observers rather than being active participants in this thing called life yeah well this has been really inspiring uh for me to talk with you too i i uh I'll, I'll put more information on on how to um, learn more about both of your practices in the description uh, below this video. But um, I, I just want to share uh, what my apartment looks like right now, wow. just to show you how I'm I'm managing with uh, with uh, COVID nineteen. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that's what it looks like. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's real. Life, that's that's life three year old. That, that's yes. Wait, well, there's more than one, right? You're more than yeah, one young child. Yeah, I have a, I have a six year old, yep. and a three year old, um, and, and it's been it's been really wonderful um, talking with you two today. Um, I, I I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to to be, be a part of this experiment, and um, Tanika, I I I've loved working with you over the last four or five months um, and, and I, I look forward to more really exciting, um, engaging and uh, brilliant conversations. Like both of you have, have so much to share um, for, for sustaining your art practice during this very difficult time. So I, I appreciate it and um, hope you um, both stay safe and, um, and uh, keep doing what you're doing because you're doing amazing things. Likewise, thank you so much. Thank you so much.